Um, so I want to start by um, talking about my motivation for this. Um, so the problem is that I have a landline phone line. Um, well, that's not really my problem, right? The real problem is that companies think it's a great idea to um, have a computer call my phone, uh, determine whether somebody answers, and then have me wait while they connect me to an agent, right? Um, so, and then they have nothing important to say to me. So they're just wasting my time, right? Um, so I want to fix this problem. I want to not deal with these calls. I don't want to listen to them ringing. I don't want to listen to the, um, you know, messages or whatever. Um, so uh, one solution might be to try an answering machine, but this doesn't work because the answering machine will pick up and it might re think it records a message, but really it's just recording silence or a dial tone. And now I have another thing that I have to go and deal with, which is deleting that message that actually has nothing in it. Um, and I still have to listen to the phone ringing that I'm ignoring because I don't want to talk to these people. So um, I want to fix that. So what, what can I do? I could maybe hire a receptionist, um, but that's too expensive. Um, I could maybe use a VoIP service. There's some that have sort of a feature like this, um, but at least what I looked into didn't have the control that I wanted over the solution. Um, cut the cord, I could just disconnect my phone line, but it turns out I'm too old to do that, right? I'm, I'm used to having landline phones and uh, I just have to continue. So, one day I had an epiphany. I, I called um, my doctor's office and I got a, the first thing that I got was a message that said, please press one to continue. And I was put, I was a little startled at first by that, but then I realized, you know, what they're doing here is probably stopping robocallers, basically. Um, and so I set out to find a way to implement that. Um, and my solution is to combine um, Asterisk, a open source PBX software, um, with Linux running on a BeagleBone Black, and some appropriate telephony hardware, a little bit of programming, and I have a system that answers the phone, um, checks if a caller is known or can prove that they are real by passing a, a test, um, and then only forwards the call to the internal phone when um, that caller is proven to be valid. So now I don't have to listen to the phone ringing for callers that I don't want to deal with. So this is a two-part solution that starts with some hardware. Um, so before, uh, what I had was the usual connection to the phone company, right? I had my phone directly connected to the um, phone company's phone line. Afterwards, um, what I have is a, I inserted a device called a analog telephone adapter into that connection. So now my phone line is plugged into this, and this is plugged into the phone company's line. And then the Linux and Astris is running over here on a computer um, that uh, controls what the ATA does. So if you haven't heard about it, the Beagle Bone Black. Um, it's a small computer that runs Linux. Um, it's fanless, low power, so um, I think it's great for this sort of an application where uh, you know, I, I don't want to dedicate a f large computer and I don't want to consume a lot of power. Um, has an Ethernet port, so it hooks into my um, network nice and easy. The other hardware component is uh, an analog telephone adapter. Um, I chose to use the Grandstream HT503, which has exactly the number of ports on it that I need it to have. Um, so, Going back to this slide for a second, uh, I need a, you know, a port that I can connect in the phone company's line, and I need a port that I can connect my phone to. And that's exactly how many ports this device has. Um, so the one that connects to the phone company is called FXO, and the one that, for office, uh, the, the O means office, and um, 
the one on the phone, my phone side is um, the subscriber side, or S. So, um, anyway, the job of this device is to convert the analog phone lines to digital, to um, the SIP protocol, um, and that way it can communicate with asterisk. So there's a few things that need to be done on um, the HT503. Um, this device is configured um, through a web UI, you, or at least the way I configure it. There are a handful of ways, but I use the web UI to configure it. Um, you need to configure the server that it should connect to, so uh, the primary SIP server. You need to give the user ID and a password that the device can use to log into that server. Importantly, disable ring through to FXS. So by default, this device, when a phone call is coming in from the phone company, it's going to ring the, um, you know, send a ring to the phone that's connected on the subscriber port. But I don't want that. So turn off ring through to FXS and set the number of rings before it answers to two. Um, so it's not waiting too long, but um, two rings ensures that it gets the caller ID. If it's, if it's only one ring, then there's a good chance that it won't get the caller ID. <clears throat> um, enable unconditional call forward um, is another important thing to enable on the ATA. Um, this says that whenever a call comes in on the uh, phone company line, the FXO port, it's going to forward that call to whatever device you specify here. Um, or actually, the, it's going to forward it as this user to this SIP server. Um, and again, that's important because I want the, when, when it answers a, f a call coming in, I want it to um, go to asterisk to be handled. And then on the FXS port, um, uh, there's a configuration, again, of the SIP server and a user ID and password, uh, just like on the FXO port. So those are the, the major hardware components. Now the software is the um, perhaps more interesting bit. So as I said, we're going to use asterisk to um, drive the, the system. Um, and uh, what I am going to do in, in my demonstration here is um, use Vagrant, use a virtual machine running with, in Vagrant to um, play around with it. Um, this is, easy, you know, I don't have the hardware with me, and also this is easier to play around with than doing it on the actual hardware. Um, so the command Vagrant init, and then a box ID. This is the latest version of Debian. Um, gets a Vagrant file set up. Uh, I recommend configuring a private network in the Vagrant file so that um, it makes it a lot easier to do the SIP connections than when there's a NAT translation going on, which is what the default is on these virtual machines. Um, and so there's a handful of steps that I want to take um, to provision. So I want to install Lua and Asterisk, the Lua programming language, and of course the Asterisk um, distribution. Then I'm going to do several customizations to that distribution. One of the things about almost any Asterisk di distribution that you get is that it's configured with this idea that you're going to use it to you know, run a big office of telecommunications equipment. And so it's going to have all the bells and whistles turned on and, you know, every possible thing that Asterisk can do um, is going to be turned on. But I don't need all that stuff. I want it to be lean and mean. Um, so I'm going to remove things that I don't need, um, like the dial plan files, the default modules configuration. It loads a bunch of modules that don't need to be loaded. Uh, and then provide my own sip.conf, modules.conf, and extensions.lua files, and copy in my custom voice messages um, that callers will hear. And then, of course, restart asterisk to pick up all those changes. 
<laughs> so I'm gonna do that with a Ansible playbook. Um, Ansible is a provisioning software uh, system similar to Puppet or Chef um, or, uh, yeah, similar to those two, uh, in that it allows you to script how a system should be configured um, and then apply that script to the system. So uh, this is part of my playbook here. Um, you write in an Ansible playbook, you write in a, it's written in an YAML format, you write, so, you know, the tasks that you want it to do. Um, and so this will execute what I said on the previous slide. And then also in the Vagrant file, um, tell it to execute this uh, playbook, to use Ansible and to execute that playbook. And then you type Vagrant up um, to get the box started, and Vagrant SSH gets you logged into the box uh, at the command line, and then you can get into a asterisk console um, with this command sudo asterisk dash rvv, and assuming that that's successful, you'll get a message like this that says connected to asterisk in a, a prompt. Um, so this dash r tells it connect to a running, already running instance of asterisk. The vv turns up the amount of information that it logs in the console, which is useful for debugging. So, some essential concepts that in asterisk are channels, which um, is how asterisk describes physical transports and the devices that are connected on those transports. And then the dial plan, which is the logic for handling calls uh, in the system. So this is effectively the programming that you do in um, an asterisk system. So we'll be using the SIP channel. Um, and uh, you know, as I said, the HT503 converts the analog phone line into a um, SIP interface. It's provided by the Chan SIP module in asterisk and configured in the sip.com file, which looks like this. Um, so I'm gonna configure two devices in, um, in my SIP configuration. I'm gonna define a uh, device called HT503FXO. So the thing inside of the square brackets is a device ID. Um, and then you configure things for that device. So one of the important things is the context. Here I'm setting the context to PSTN. Um, and we'll see in the dial plan that this is how the things that the, uh, it, it determines what things are accessible to calls on this device. Um, you set up the username and uh, a password um, and do a similar s configuration for the FXS port. Uh, here the context will be internal because this is connected to, this port is connecting my uh, internal phones. So each device has a context. It defines where in the dial plan the call is handled and also what extensions, if you will, the device, the call can access. So I have two contexts, PSTN and internal. So the dial plan, as I said, provides call handling logic. Um, by default, it's written in this um, essentially INI file format that has uh, grown some extra heads and some arms and tentacles and now has a little bit of programming language in it, um, it which is very much a go-to considered harmful style. Um, so you, you have things like a, a, a label, like test menu there, and then, you know, these commands, um, and you have, uh, you know, a go-to to a labeled line. Um, so anyway, I, not very appealing to me. What I recommend is uh, writing the dial plan in Lua, um, which is a structured programming language uh, you know, and, and modern programming language. Um, the key thing is that P 
PBX Lua needs to be loaded in order to do the dial plan in the Lua programming language. The way that a dial plan is defined when you're programming in Lua is as a table, um, which is a, a table in Lua is a key value mapping. So um, the first thing you have to define is a extensions table. Um, and so here I'm just defining that as an empty um, table. And then you add your context. So my PSTN context, again, I just define it as an empty table and the internal context. And then the extensions you define within those contexts, again, the extension is a key in that context table, uh, but now the uh, value is a function um, that implements the call handling logic. Extensions in um, asterisk can have any sort of, you know, they could be numbers like this, but they could also be names. They can be any alphanumeric um, set of characters. So, all right, so having defined that, I want to go over um, to the, uh, so I have, um, I have asterisk running here on, um, on a vagrant box, as I described. And um, I have a simple SIP um, phone application that um, I've configured to log in with the, um, over here, this window, I've configured it to log in with the identity that I use for the internal um, phones, the FXS port. Um, and, you know, when I was young, um, uh, the really cool thing you could do was um, call up a phone number and it would tell you the time and temperature, right? Well, um, I'm going to do that here. Um, I've, or at least part of that here. So, I've defined an extension that's called time and um, Go ahead and call that, oh, address not found. Oh, right, because I um, restarted the system, so it um, is not there, probably. So let's go, um, So I'm going to, oops, that's not the directory I want to go to. Um, so the extensions.lua file is the um, file where you define a Lua dial plan. And um, I'm going to define a, this, this um, up here on line 73, I'm defining a extension called time, and that is, that extension is going to answer the call and call a application called say Unix time. Um, I also need to make sure that um, that application is loaded because I don't usually load that by default. So you would load app, say, Unix time. And then uh, to get this um, to get this file that has this update in it into the um, virtual machine, I will run um, a vagrant provision. And 
and this is going to go and um, make sure that uh, everything's up to date according to the playbook. So it um, is checking. Right now it's pausing because uh, the install Lua task updates all of the um, packages or you know, make sure that they're up to date. And then it went ahead and ran all those things um, and restarted asterisk. And now let's see if that um, works correctly. Oh, right, and it restarted, so I need to once again load the module. Thursday, June 25th, oh, 2015, finally. at 8.51 p.m. Um, so, um, there you go. Got at least the time part of time and temperature. Um, so this illustrates that extensions could have any, um, you know, they can be a word as opposed to the traditional number. Um, and also some of the basics of uh, the dial plan as well as unintentionally uh, demonstrating the provisioning. All right, so um, let's go back to the slides. So the outgoing calls, the ones where I pick up my internal phone and I want to place a call to somebody else are the easier ones to handle. Um, so I'm going to define a um, internal extension, which is going to be a pattern, actually. It's not going to have a specific name. So any number that gets dialed that matches this pattern is going to go into this function. <clears throat> and the function can have parameters associated, you know, can have a list of parameters. So this function's taking the context and the extension. So whatever was dialed that matched this pattern is going to get passed as the extension here. Um, and the only thing we need to do for this is to use the dial application to dial over to the FXO port. So <clears throat> we'll call um, dial with the address of the FXO port and then the dot dot and x, uh, well, this string dot dot a string variable is a um, concatenation in Lua. So we concatenate to the end of that the extension that we want it to, um, we want the FXO port to dial when it picks up the line. Um, the Trickier part is handling incoming calls. So in the PSTN um, context, I'm defining a extension called HT503FXO. And so this is what's gonna get called um, when a call is coming in on the FXO port. I'm gonna write this function to say if check call, so I'm gonna call a function called check call, if that returns true, I'm gonna assume that this is good, that um, it's not a robot. And so I will forward it to the um, internal phone. So we're forwarding to the FXS port. Um, and if it's false, it just ends and um, the call uh, is terminated. So the key to this system is getting the caller ID and there's a caller ID dial plan function provided by asterisk. You can call it with an argument to tell it what part of the caller ID you want to get. Here I want to get the number, so I'm going to use that um, form. And so my check call function then um, will call the caller ID function, get the uh, caller ID that was provided, put it into a local variable. Then it will check whether the caller ID is in a whitelist by calling the is whitelisted function. And if that returns false, so that means that it's not in the whitelist, then we'll do the robot challenge by calling the is robot function. So 
is the color in a whitelist. Um, colors are put in the whitelist either manually um, or when they pass the robot challenge. And so I'm assuming that once they've passed it, that, um, that I should just continue to allow them to um, call in automatically. And the whitelist is maintained in the asterisk database, which is kind of a system service that asterisk provides. Uh, this database is organized in trees of families and keys, where each family and key pair has a value associated with it. So the families are like a table, um, and then the key and the, and the value define rows within that table. So I store the whitelist in a family called whitelist, where the keys are defined by the caller ID, um, and values are just the timestamp that the record was written in. There's a DB exist function that tells us whether the caller is in the whitelist, and that returns one if present, zero if not. So um, the is whitelisted function then would look like this, um, call the DB exists <coughs> um, dial plan uh, function. Um, and we build up a, a key and, sorry, a family and key identifier, so whitelist slash and then the caller ID and check whether it returns one, which means they're in the whitelist, so return true or false otherwise. So if they are not in the whitelist, they're gonna go to the robot challenge and the steps here are answer the call, um, play a greeting message, ask the caller to press some random number between zero and nine, um, read the press number or timeout if it's a robot, and if correct, um, forward the call, otherwise hang up. So the implementation of that uh, in the isRobot function starts with the answer function. Um, that just you know answers the call. Um, then we use the playback function to play back a file. So here I'm gonna play back a greeting message. Um, then I'm gonna get a random digit by calling the random function on the, um, on the channel and tell it that I want a number from zero to nine. Store that into a local variable. Um, say the number. Um, the second, so you pass the first argument is the number you want it to say. The second argument is supposed to be uh, the gender that you want it to be said with. Um, I would like it to say it with a male voice, but uh, it doesn't work, and I think maybe that's because there's no male voice defined, perhaps? I need to look into that a little bit more. Anyway, it'll say the number. Um, and then we use the uh, read application to read a value back from the caller. We'll pass one as the third argument, which means I only want to read one digit. Um, and that will get stored into a variable with the name that we give in the first argument. So I'm gonna store it in a variable called entered. And then I'll check whether the entered value is equal to the um, digit that we selected randomly. So if it's not equal, then because I named the function is robot, if it's not equal, then it must be a robot. Otherwise, it's not a robot. Sorry about the negative logic there. Um, I'm sorry? Or a fat-fingered human, right. Um, so that's pretty much the, the robot check. Um, now, in reality, um, I'm gonna let callers have a couple of chances, so hopefully they don't fat finger it three times. Um, and also I'm gonna record the callers in the database, so good callers go into that whitelist family, bad callers go into the robots family, and nothing really, I don't really use that robots family for anything other than just knowing uh, who they were, I guess. Um, yeah, so if you looked at the, um, uh, 
you know, if, if I showed the actual code that I wrote, um, uh, well, this doesn't actually show it. This is, this is actually um, a slightly different code than I intended to have here, but um, very, very similar to the, uh, what I showed on the slides. It's um, actually playing back the messages here. Um, so uh, it plays back a greeting message, a message that says, we don't recognize your number, and then a message that says, continue, to continue, please press. And then it says the number. Um, so to demonstrate, um, I also have my soft phone here configured to dial in to the FXO port uh, or the FXO extension. Have reached and Michael so Pig. If Your I, number is not recognized. To continue, please press. Two. And so, um, you know, I could... Um, wait because I'm not really a human, right? And after a few seconds, it you will time out. Michael Pig. He'll do it again. Your number is not recognized. To continue, please press five. And then if I um, press the right number, then it will go ahead and uh, send the call through. Um, and we got that busy signal because I declined the call on the FXS port. Um, so that's, that's how it works. Uh, let's see. Um, managing the whitelist right now is done through the command line on the, um, the uh, um, asterisk console. So um, you have to be in the asterisk console and then um, uh, you can use the commands like what I've shown here, like to view the whitelist. Um, we would say database show whitelist. And um, right now there's one entry indicate, you know, for, for the call that I just made. Um, so now if I call again with the um, soft phone, uh, I'm not sure why it um, is doing this. Well, anyway, we didn't get the robot challenge. Um, you can see, uh, Well, okay, this, for some reason this got an authentication error here. Um, but at any rate, we, we wouldn't have to go through the robot challenge because the um, caller's in the whitelist now. Um, and if we uh, wanted to delete somebody from the whitelist, uh, we could do it with that command or adding somebody with the whitelist could be done with the add command. So, this could use some enhancements. It works well um, as it stands. It would be nice to provision the ATA automatically. Um, a UI for managing the um, lists would be very nice instead of having to go into the asterisk console to do it. Um, maybe expand the definition of whitelist or be able to send a message to my iPhone so that I don't have to get up off the couch to see, you know, what's going on. Um, here's uh, the link to the Asterisk site, and this book that's at asterisk.org is a excellent book for understanding Asterisk. Um, the third edition of it is available in its entirety at asterisk.org, uh, and you can buy the fourth edition from O'Reilly, and if you're going to do much of this, I would definitely recommend buying a copy of it. It is uh, the most straightforward explanation that I have found of 
asterisk. And information about Vagrant, which I used in the um, uh, system here. And the code I have put on my GitHub site in the um, RoboScreen um, project. Um, so, uh, are there any questions? All right, thank you. Mm -hmm.